Now that it's Christmas and soon to be New Year's, I find that I've got more free time than I usually do, so I want to tackle a few quick, long overdue projects. First of which is my Sentinel 430 Blonde TV, which I restored a few years ago. It's one of the first TV restorations I did, actually. Now, just like the GE810, I want to do a little redo restoration on this. In particular, I want to swap out the picture tube. When I got this set, uh, it came from a relative of a woman who worked at the Sentinel plant, and this set was located about a mile from where that plant used to be, so I think this set went right from the factory to her living room. It stayed there its whole life, so it's in fantastic condition. But, I'm pretty sure it still has the original picture tube. It was pretty weak when I got it. I did a little rejuvenation attempt, which made it better, but it wasn't an aluminized picture tube to begin with. It's a first generation rectangular. It's unmarked, but I'm pretty sure it's either a 16TP4 or a 16RP4. Well, oh, maybe a year ago? Could be two years ago now. I got my hands on a really nice aluminized 16KP4. And that's what I want to put in this set. It's an RCA 16KP4A. It tests not, not perfect, but pretty darn good. And with the aluminized screen, it'll produce a sharper, brighter picture. Or at least a brighter picture than a non-aluminized, even if the electron gun was a little weak. Also, when I restored this, I didn't have a lot of the test equipment that I've got now. So, I certainly didn't do an alignment. And even my tube tester back then might have just been an emission type. Plus, I've been using this set off and on for three or four years since I restored it. Oh, and this, uh, this is an advertising sign I got off of eBay. Uh, and this is an original sales flyer. So, my set is in here somewhere. Uh, right there. 430 CVB B for Blonde, I believe. Blonde Karina Wood. I don't know about but I think a huge 17 inch picture. Uh, they took a lot of liberties back then with the screen size. It's definitely a 16 inch picture tube. So. <laughs> uh, anyways, so before I do anything, I'm going to set up a uh, signal source and a tripod and let's take some reference footage before I touch anything. Alright, let's see what this set can do as it stands. I've got it hooked up to my cable. I still have the most basic of basic cable packages. So it's not digital, it's not high def, and it comes with a little decoder box that can output RF on either channel 3 or 4. I think I'm using channel 3. Whatsoever when I use cable. Well, there's a problem right there. Like I said, I never align this set. I hope so. That's one thing I can do. It's the brightness. So, and you see the picture's not so hot. And I haven't run this set in a while. I imagine 
as it warms up the picture will get a bit brighter and better. Not as I've been sitting idle, for, but uh, tubes that are kind of worn out, they tend to take a few minutes to really warm up fully. So I'll just keep everything set up right now and come back in like five minutes and let's reassess the picture. Okay, it's been about ten minutes now and things actually don't seem to have changed a whole lot. So it's okay, it's certainly watchable, but as you turn the brightness up, the picture looks lousy, you kind of lose focus. So you have to keep it, and you, get, you get ghosting around the edges, and I've heard that's a sign of a, of a weak CRT. So you really have to keep the brightness pretty low to eliminate that effect, so like down around here, which means you've got to watch this with the lights turned off, or at least a very dim room. As far as the sound, it just occurred to me that you can adjust the channel oscillator slugs. So I pulled the knob off and I've got my twiddle sticks out, so let's see if I can at least take care of that right here now. occurred to me that I may have muted my cable box. I really don't use cable anymore since I got my new digital TV. I just use an antenna and do over the air and I got a Google Chromecast and I can stream YouTube and Netflix and all that stuff so I just don't use cable. So I had realized that I had it on mute. All right, so. And now to thank you for your generosity, I have something for you. It's a gift, uh, a small remembrance of our friendship. Oh, what is it? It's a stopwatch, an old family heir. Oh, what are you doing? So I mean, it's a really it's a stopwatch. That is a fact. But it is yours. You may have it. What will I do with it? It's a stopwatch. All right, so what I want to do is pull the chassis out and get it up on the workbench. I want to check all the tubes. I want to swap out the pitcher tube. And I want to go through the alignment procedure and I want to tweak the pitcher tube as best I can for linearity and put it all back together. Hopefully that won't take too long. Wrap it up in one day. It's a little bit older than I remembered. It's March 1951. And here's the chassis. It's all self-contained. CRT mounts right under the chassis. And uh, speaker plugs in from below. You disconnect that and you just pull the whole thing right out. doesn't have any bolts in it right now, so it's ready to come right out. Here's the chassis up on the workbench. It's copper plated, no corrosion whatsoever. Voltage cage, power transformer. Kind of unique in early sets is that it actually has a fuse in it. Although I just noticed it's 3 8 amp, which means it's got to be just for the. Well, now I'm confused. Because so that says quarter amp, that's what's going to fly back, but the set has to take more than 3 8 of an amp. got to be a couple of amps. Yeah, but that is a 3 8 amp fuse. Huh. Let's check on the schematic and see what that's actually fusing. It can't be the whole set. There's no way. Anyways, first thing I'm going to do is show you how the CRT tests and check out the replacement CRT and then I'll start checking the tubes in terms of replacing the CRT pop off the ion trap magnets 
Uh, replacement may or may not need one. Some of the early aluminized CRT still used bent electron guns, so they'd need an ion trap. Not because it's preventing any screen burn, but just some because, simply because they used a bent gun in it, and they got to straighten out those electrons, so they go straight. Uh, and to get it off, you just loosen up, screw on either side, take this band off, carefully slide the CRT out, and that should be it. No uh, external conductive coating on this. There must be a high voltage filter cap inside here, and they don't rely on any external coating on the CRT to provide any high voltage filtering. Alright. Of course, we know the CRT is good because we were just watching it. Um, but it's nice to get some idea how it actually tests. Let's see. Again, I don't know quite exactly what type this is, but I'll guess it's a 16 TP4. I think that was the very first rectangular 16 inch pitcher, too. Thirty-six. See, the cutoff is terrible on the thirty-six range. I can't get into the black box. I got to drop it down to minus twenty. So, right away, that's a good indication that it's weak. Wow. <laughs> it's even weaker than I realized. Man, that thing is way into the bad. I don't know sure it's filament's actually uh, set right. Yeah, it's actually a little too high. So uh, one thing this tells you guys is if you got a TV and you're questioning whether or not to restore it or if you can get by with the picture tube you've got, as you saw, in a dim room, this is perfectly watchable. But a test way down on the scale. So if you got a rare set and it's got a weak picture tube, while you're trying to find a good one, you go ahead and try the weak one. You know, and if certainly you get the set running at least, and you know watch it uh, to some extent. As long as you get some emissions, usually you can get some kind of image on the screen. Now here's the CRT I proposed to put into this set. Turns out the 16KP fork uses the same settings as the TP4. In fact, if you look on here, there's a 16KP4, LP4, MP4, QP4, RP4, SP4, TP4, and UP4. Settings are all the same, except for the QP4 is 52 for the negative bias. The rest are all 36, I think. So, essentially they're all interchangeable. Why they all have all those different designators came out, I'm not sure. Probably had something to do with um, the race to come out with the first rectangular sets. And different manufacturers came out with different designators, but they're basically electrically identical. And I was wondering where did I get this. Well, one of the... Uh, most prolific TV collectors out there who shall remain nameless kind of came out of seclusion and sold a few CRTs on eBay and I contacted him and it turns out he had a few others for sale so I got this along with a couple 17 BP4s all right now, it's been a while since I checked it but last time I did it was certainly still good And film and glow, and there better not be any shorts. It's basically been in my bedroom all this time. Slowly coming back to life. Remember, this hasn't been powered up in over a year. And the emissions are already well into the good. Okay, this, test, this actually tests better than I remember it testing.
I'll let this heat up for a few more minutes, but I can already tell this is going to be a much, much better pitcher tube than the one that's currently in there. It's only been about three minutes and the cutoff is now. Definitely, I can vary it so it gets into that black box region and missions are great and life test. Solid. Alright, so this is going to be fantastic, I think. So, next up I'm going to pop out all the tubes and test them, which is very boring, so I'm going <laughs> to edit that out of the video. And I'm going to post what I've got now because I want to let you guys know what I'm working on and I'll pick up in the next part with the results of the tube testing and the installation of the new picture tube.